Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So it looks like Artemis 2 is a go for launch. Well, obviously it's not a go for launch until we are actually on the launch pad, but it seems like NASA might be in a position to slightly alter the launch window to earlier than previously thought. And I feel like that never happens. We never go earlier, right? It's always delay, delay, push back, push back, push back, push earlier. I'm very excited. Which means that Artemis 2 would launch in less than six months. So let's talk about why they think we are going to launch earlier, remind us all what Artemis 2 is trying to do, and why should we be excited by this mission? Because I am excited, and you should all be joining me in my excitement. So just to remind us all, the Artemis program, much like its predecessor, the Apollo program, is our return mission to the moon. Though Apollo was not a return mission, it was just a mission to the moon. But you guys get what I'm saying. Artemis 1 was the launch of an unmanned spacecraft that went to the moon, circled around, came back again. Artemis 2 will be the manned spacecraft circling the moon, coming back again. And Artemis 3 will be a manned spacecraft going to the moon and actually landing on it, marking our return back to the moon for the first time since 1972. The Artemis 1 mission was a smash hit back in 2022. We went to the moon, circled around the moon with a brand new Orion spacecraft, and splashed back down successfully after 25 days. There were some minor issues with a heat shield that have since been addressed, but the last time I heard, Artemis 2 had been delayed several times, with the earliest launch date projected to be April of 2026. But now, NASA seems to be changing its tune, and in a press briefing on September 23rd, 2025, they said that they hope to send the Artemis II astronauts to the moon as early as February 5th. 2026. Lakeisha Hawkins, NASA's acting deputy associate administrator, said the launch window could open as early as the 5th of February, but we want to emphasize that safety is our top priority. We together have a front row seat to history. And yes, I've heard a lot of guff about how this mission isn't really that exciting because this isn't the one where we actually land on the moon. But it has been 50 years since any country has flown a crewed lunar mission of any sort. Like every moon mission that I have covered on this channel since I started doing this has been unmanned. All of them. The ones that landed sideways, the ones that didn't land sideways, the ones that didn't land at all. Whether they're circling the moon, flying past the moon, landing on the moon, no crews at all. So the fact that we are going back in any crewed capacity, never mind the last mission before we land back on the moon, to me, is very exciting. And remember, the whole point of the Artemis program is to land astronauts and to establish a long-term presence on the lunar surface. It's like a three-step process, and what I'm talking about is step two. So how close are we really to this February 5th launch? Well, Artemis launch director Charlie Blackwell-Thompson explained that the rocket system built to take the astronauts to the moon, the Space Launch System, or SLS, was pretty much stacked and ready to go. He said that all that remained was for them to finish the Orion space capsule and to finish the remaining ground tests. And I know I've covered this before, but just as a quick refresher, the Artemis 2 mission will see four astronauts go on a 10-day round trip to the moon and back to Earth. The astronauts, Reed Weissman, Victor Glover, and Christina Cook of NASA, and Jeremy Hansen of the Canadian Space Agency, will be the first crew to travel beyond low Earth orbit since Apollo 17 in 1972. And Artemis 2 is not just about flying circles around the moon and coming home. They're aiming to make some history of their own. And this is the part of this mission that I think people are not fully grasping. The lead Artemis 2 flight director, Jeff Jeff Radigan explained that the crew of this mission would be flying further into space than anyone had been before. Radigan said they're going at least 5,000 nautical miles, or 9,200 kilometers, past the moon, which is much higher than previous missions have gone. And there is a lot riding on this mission for these astronauts, because the aim of the mission is to test the rocket and spacecraft systems to lay the groundwork for a lunar landing. It's basically a super thorough dry run of how we will return to the moon 
with this new system. And here's how this new system is supposed to work. The astronauts will enter the Orion capsule, which will be their home for the duration of their journey, which sits on top of SLS. Orion will be carried initially into Earth orbit with the help of two solid rocket boosters, which will fall back to Earth two minutes after launch once they have done the heavy lifting. Eight minutes after launch, the massive core stage will separate from the second stage, called the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion System. System, or ICPS, and the Orion crew capsule. Orion's solar arrays will unfurl and begin charging the spacecraft's batteries to provide power when it is not in direct sunlight. 90 minutes later, ICPS will fire its engines to raise the vehicle to a higher Earth orbit, and for the next 25 hours, there will be a full systems check. If everything is in order, Orion will separate from ICPS, and then there will be a sort of a space ballet between the two vehicles called the Proximity Operations Demonstration. Astronauts will manually control Orion's maneuvering thruster to dance toward and away from ICPS. And this is a critical part because this will be to rehearse docking procedures in order to link up with a landing vehicle for the eventual moon landing. 23 hours later, Orion's service module will carry out a translunar injection burn, a blast of thrust aiming it at the moon. Before Orion makes its four-day journey, taking the astronauts more than 230,000 miles from Earth. And of course, during this journey, the astronauts will be continually carrying out systems checks. But of course, this flight is not just about checking out the spacecraft. The astronauts themselves will be continually monitored to see how their bodies are adjusting to being in space, especially this far out. Scientists will grow tissue samples from the astronauts' blood called organoids, both before and after the journey. According to Nikki Fox, the two sets of organoids will be compared to see how the astronauts' bodies are affected by space. She said, we want to be able to study in depth the effect of the microgravity and the radiation on these samples. I'm certainly not going to be dissecting an astronaut, but I can dissect these little organoid samples and really look at the difference. After the spacecraft slingshots past the moon, the astronauts will begin their four day journey home with the help of Earth's gravity. On arrival, the service module, which has the spacecraft's primary propulsion system, will separate from the crew module. The astronauts will then begin a dangerous part of the mission as they re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and parachute back to the surface off the coast of California near San Diego. The success of this mission will help NASA determine how soon it can launch Artemis 3, the one where we actually land back on the moon. But that's probably going to be a while. As of right now, NASA's launch date for Artemis 3 is no earlier the mid-2027. But there are those who think that even that date is a little too optimistic. According to Dr. Simeon Barber of the Open University, even if the mission goes to perfection, NASA's stated aim of no earlier than mid-2027 is unrealistic. He said, no earlier than is familiar language for NASA, and it means just that. That's the earliest possibility. He went on to say, the moon landing will require SpaceX Starship to take the astronauts to and from the surface. And we've seen in recent months that Starship itself still has a long way to go before it can even achieve an orbital flight around the Earth, let alone put astronauts on board. And what he's talking about is that Artemis 3 will need SpaceX to provide the Starship Human Landing System, which is the vehicle that will take the astronauts from lunar orbit to the moon's surface and back. NASA selected SpaceX in 2021 to develop Starship HLS for Artemis 3, a contract that is crucial for that mission. And as of this recording, Starship HLS is the only HLS option for Artemis 3, meaning any delay in its readiness could also delay the mission's timeline. So now when we're cheering for Starship, we're really cheering for Artemis 3. And as we've all witnessed, Starship has had some recent misses as well as hits, so I see what Dr. Barber is saying. But as for now, NASA seems pretty ready to go with Artemis 2, and if it's really gonna happen in like five months, that's 
really exciting. So I will keep you guys posted on the story and let you know if there are any updates or changes. So what do you think? Are we excited yet? People in a spacecraft circling the moon, going farther past the moon than anyone ever has before, and then coming back to Earth with a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean to tell us all about it. Space is just the best. I feel like whenever things seem like they're getting dark and it's getting pretty bleak out there, I just go, space, man. Space is just the coolest. Thanks, space, for keeping me going. <laughs> okay, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.